So in this last lecture segment on protection operation, we're going to look at the different coordination types. So that would be coordination between feeder circuit breaker and reclosers, excuse me. That would be the coordination between circuit breakers and fuses, between reclosers and fuses, and also fuse to fuse coordination. For the coordination between circuit breakers and reclosers, we have a substation breaker, which is set up for both time over current and instantaneous current protection. So the time over current would be this ANSI 51. The instantaneous current trip would be the ANSI 50 function. And recall that the circuit breakers typically set up to be three phase ganged. We don't typically have single phase operation. The reason being that if I had like large industrial commercial three-phase customers at the top of the feeder, I don't want to subject them to imbalanced voltage. And so we typically would just consider three-phase operation the type of the circuit. But as far as coordinating with downstream reclosers, then we want the recloser to basically take care of any faults that are below that particular device. And so if we were going to look at this little simple example, the, the recloser, this could be protecting an area we call zone one. The, the breaker would then protect this area zone two. Anytime we have a fault in zone one, we want the recloser to operate first so the customers upstream are not outage. If there's a fault in zone two, obviously the breaker is going to have to operate. And then the breaker would serve as a backup for the recloser. For some reason, if a fault in zone one was not handled by the recloser, then the breaker would be the backup device. For the interaction between circuit breakers and, and fuses, one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times top of feeder circuit breakers are set up to use reclosing. And so this would be this ANSI function 79. And the reason we're doing this, if we turn out to have a temporary fault on the main feeder, as is shown, say, like in this location A, then we don't want to have to outage the entire feeder if it turns out we could have cleared that through a reclosing operation. So we would, we would give it maybe one, two, three, four reclosing attempts to try to clear that fault. And if it turns out that we can't clear that fault through those reclosing attempts, we stop doing that and we either let a downstream fuse blow or that breaker's gonna clear the fault and simply lock out, which would mean that a crew would have to go out there, or a SCADA operator would have to, to actually close that uh, circuit breaker back in again. For a fault at location B, if we went the fuse to operate before the breaker, we need to make sure the curves are coordinated. And so this little time current curve example on the right shows this T50 fuse and uh, characteristic in blue, and we have the breaker characteristic shown in red. And so if I have a fault at location B, then what we see is that the fuse is gonna operate first before the breaker. So the, the breaker would act as the backup in this case. When we have faults at the top of the circuit, say like at location C, those are much higher current levels. We're talking of, you know, thousands of amperes in this case. And uh, it's, it's usually kind of difficult to do too much in terms of fuse coordination where we might want to do what we call a fuse saving scheme, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So in this, if this is going to be the case, we just simply use a really fast fuse and have that fast fuse blow as quickly as possible to isolate that particular fault. For reef closer to fuse coordination, these reclosers, as I mentioned before, are, are special purpose circuit breakers that have been devised to work out on the distribution feeder. And they're, they're usually used in conjunction with fuses. And they're basically designed to do a lot of operations in order to try to clear temporary faults. And so if there's a temporary fault out there, we use the reclosing functionality to try to clear 
um, the temporary fault um, rather than just cause permanent outages that are that are unnecessary. And if we have this scenario shown in this diagram at the bottom where we have a, a fault on the load side of this T40 fuse, if we were going to try to clear that fault through a recloser operation, instead of letting the fuse blow first, we operate the recloser first and attempt to, to save that fuse, then this is what we would refer to as fuse savings. Okay, we're going to save that T40 fuse by blowing unnecessarily by operating that recloser and having that recloser occur that temporary fault. As I mentioned in the last lecture, these reclosers have a couple different curve families. They have fast curves and they have slow curves. And so what we would do is we would use the fast curve on the recloser, which is going to be faster than the fuse, to, to clear that fault first or attempt to clear the temporary fault first. And then if it turns out this recloser is unsuccessful, what it does is it switches over to the slow curve. And what that does is that forces the fuse to blow. So an example of how this would work in terms of using the time over current curves is imagine we have a, a hydraulic recloser out in the field. It's a 100 ampere device. This is the continuous current it could carry. So this Cooper Type 4E is a very common type of hydraulic device. And we're going to set that up where we have both fast and slow curves in place. And this curve at the bottom is going to be the fast curve. And this curve at the top is going to be the slow curve for this hydraulic recloser. Now, if we chose a relatively fast fuse, like a Kearney K25 fuse, that Kearney fuse would have the characteristics shown in blue. So what would happen if I had a given fault on the circuit? Well, for a given current level, that fuse would blow first. It would actually blow before that fast curve on the on the recloser is activated. And so this in this particular case, we have what we call fuse blowing in place. We actually want the fuse to blow before the recloser has a chance to operate. Another scenario would be to have the fuse savings. And so what we do in this place for this downstream fuse, we would choose a fuse characteristic that's between the fast curve and the slow curve. All right. So we have to make sure we have the right sort of fuse characteristic. This is going to be the case once I have a certain type of fault. What happens is a recloser operates on its fast curve first. Now, depending on the sequencing, you know, we may want to give it two chances to do that. Then what happens is if the fault's still there after we go through, say, like a couple operations on the fast curve, then the recloser switches over to the slow curve and forces this fuse to blow and to clear the fault. And so if it turned out the fault were temporary, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clearing that through the through the recloser operation. Um, if the fault turns out to be permanent, well, we go through a few reclosing operations, but that's unsuccessful. Then we switch the other curve on the recloser and we force that, that fuse to blow. And so this is, again, what we're going to refer to as fuse savings. And later on in the reliability lectures, we're going to be talking a little bit more about, well, what's the difference between having fuse savings and not having fuse savings when we look at different sort of reliability metrics. Uh, a few notes about this, this recloser to fuse coordination and, and making use of fuse savings. Typically, where the fuse saving is good is where we have areas in the circuit where we have a lot of temporary faults. And so there's a lot of opportunity to use the reclosing in order to clear the, clear the faults. Where we don't have that many faults or with the faults which would occur would be permanent, then we would probably want to have fuse blowing schemes. And another case where you might want to have fuse blowing schemes is if we have an area of the circuit where we have power quality sensitive, say, industrial commercial customers, and we don't want to subject them to a lot of circuit momentary interruptions. And so we might want to do more fuse blowing in those sections of the circuit. And it turns out we can also have hybrid schemes where, where we want the fuse to blow, we use 
say like fast fuses like K fuses, where we want to have the fuses more in a safe mode, um, then we would have these slower KS type of fuses. And we could actually kind of get a kind of a uh, the best of both worlds in a way by just using the the slow and the the fast fuses at the at the right location. And so we'll we'll get into this more in the reliability lectures uh, about how this actually gives us benefits in terms of improving our um, reliability indices. And we could do the same thing with the circuit breaker as well. We could also use the top of feeder circuit breaker to do fuse savings. But again, the problem you run into is that if you're trying to do reclosing in order just to save some fuse on the circuit, you're basically blinking the entire circuit, which is not really that desirable. And so again, you could you could do the few savings at the circuit breaker, but you just gotta consider you know what the ramifications of that would be. You could also have fuse to fuse coordination, and as I mentioned before, fuses will will start to melt at twice their current rating. I uh, mentioned before that we have different speeds of fuses. Uh, I've talked more specifically about the K, the T, and the KS fuses where the K is the, fa the fastest of these three fuses. And when you're coordinating fuses in series, then say if I had a fault here at the end, uh, the far right-hand side, then what we would have is we would have the smaller fuse actually operate first. And so at the top, I'd have a T40, maybe at the bottom, I'd have something like a T20. The current levels for the load are naturally dropping off the further we get down this particular lateral. And if we had proper fuse coordination, then basically for a fault at this particular location, the T20 would blow. And then these customers upstream wouldn't see an outage as a result of that. And so again, we're trying to improve selectivity by having more protective devices in the circuit. Now, one thing you have to watch out for is you have to make sure these fuses coordinate. And it turns out that if these fuses are really close together, um, there may not be enough difference in the fault current to, to properly coordinate those fuses. One other thing you have to watch out for as well when you're trying to get coordination of the fuses is I talked about having the, the maximum and minimum melt curves. Well, one other thing you have to worry about is that sometimes these fuses are operating on a damage curve. So let's suppose I had upstream reclosing in place. And if I had a fall at this particular location, and let's suppose we had a situation where we had a, a temporary fault on this 65 KS fuse, but that was actually saved through the operation of the upstream breaker. Well, if we had a fault here, even for a short period of time, that would cause a little bit of a damage to this, this fuse as well. And so what happens is that we would actually be operating now in the future on what we call this damage curve. The fuse characteristics actually get modified. And so what thing we have to make sure of is when we want to make sure we have the proper coordination, we'd also want to take into account that we could also have damaged fuses upstream that we still want to coordinate with as well. So anyway, we'll get into this later on when we talk about circuit reliability in the, in the next lecture segment. And we'll, we'll actually see how this actually gets applied for coming up with the reliability indices. And again, I'm not expecting you to be able to set relays and actually select fuses, but you need to know the sequence of operation for any given fall, then what's gonna be the protected device, which is gonna be expected to clear the, the fall. You need to know this to, in order to, to compute reliability indices. For some future references, Tom Short's book is, is a good reference where it kind of goes through the basics of protection. Uh, another good book, which is unfortunately out of print, is a book by Cooper Power Systems. Now this is Eaton that was published in 2005 on um, distribution system protection, also went into some other material on surge arresters. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to release this book again, but you could possibly find this at some used book sites, maybe like like eBay. And then if you want to do something with the time 
uh, current curves as far as doing some coordination things on their own. These are, these are usually uh, available as commercial computer programs. If you just want something to play around with, there's also a free version up on the SNC Electric site. Uh, there's what's called the, the coordinate application, and this is the particular web link for that. So that gives you some ability of, of working with some of these time current curves, over current curves if you want. 